All right, let's get into uh, crude oil. So crude oil, remember, we yesterday we had the big, uh, play yesterday's video, we had the big break retest of high value area that we went over before it broke out, and that produced a huge 120 tick runner. $1,200 potential yesterday before it happened, risking 130 bucks max risk. Well, today um, we had a same similar situation, break retest control point. Control point is a little bit higher here, but this is a buy setup. We broke retested the control uh, off of that trend line also and had a nice movement up. Had nice another control in the second test over here for you guys. The control was there earlier for a nice pop. But the big trade is the trade we're in now is because we have a rising wedge. Rising wedges are bearish. Now, a rising wedge is composed of at least, it has to have two. I like three higher lows. Three higher lows. Here's one, here's two, here's three, and three higher highs. So if you get three higher lows and you get three higher, higher highs, you're talking about a rising wedge. And rising wedges are bearish. So when you see rising wedges, they are very bearish in nature. You want to see it break and take the first retracement to market profile. So you traders that got short, Veronica and Earl and the rescue traders that got short that market, you are correct in shorting that rising wedge. Here's your three higher highs. Here's your three higher lows. Here's your, here's your control point bounce right, with the overall trend, here's your control point bounce, but here is a resistance, look at this nice resistance right there, that is high value area, it stopped almost to the exact tick, just a beautiful, beautiful short because the rising wedges are bearish, look at this power in this move that we're getting right now, now look at the negative market delta over here, remember, the J signal doesn't have to match up, this white chart does not have to match up, we use that for a break inside and outside and corrective waves, all right, so, these two charts are green because we have negative market delta right here, negative market delta at a retracement of a break retest of HVA. And like Adam pointed out, very good point, Adam pointed out just now, it had the moving average crossover. If these moving averages cross over, you tend to like to take the first retracement, and that should crack the market to the downside. And sure enough, so the live fill or the fill that you'd be filled would have been right there, 95 short. Your stop loss is two ticks above this swing high. Good job, traders. You guys got on that. And now we're down to low value area. So you've got to scale here. Scale your contracts. If you got 95 short, you're resting down here at 75. You're up $200 for one contract. Your maximum risk initially on the trade was 130 bucks. Well, we'll see exactly how much it was. If your fill is 95, all right there, 95 with slippage, 95 short, your stop loss is two ticks above this swing high. So the swing high was 07, right, 07. So 09 is your stop loss, two ticks above the swing high. So we're nine, we're nine ticks there. Add another five ticks on top of nine. You're right there at 13, 13 uh, to 14 tick stop. So, you know, depending on your fill, you're right around. We do not, we do not like to have any more than a 15 tick maximum stop. We don't risk more than 150 bucks on these trades per one contract, no matter what. But then we adjust two ticks below, above the swing high or swing low. Typically, you're right around 13 ticks. Almost, almost all the trades are going to be right around 13 ticks if you're pulling the trigger correctly. But our maximum stop loss is $150. Good job, Earl. Earl shorted the gold trade two on the rising wedge break. Good job. Good job, man. So, uh, but that shows you the power of market profile. Not See, you could use pattern recognition, right? We knew this was a rising, rising wedge, which is bearish. We know this in our sleep, how to look at rising wedges. Now, remember, if you got this on your own system, if you lease the program, right, then you have this and you trade the S&P 500 or NASDAQ futures or Dow minis, they, it works on all markets. What you do, guys and gals, skinny the chart down. This is how I find these uh, setups. Skinny, the, skinny price data down by taking your mouse and holding it it's it. You don't want to look at price action like this, big five-minute bars, right? You want to skinny it down to see if you have higher lows, lower highs, etc. I mean, we had a descending triangle this week on gold. We had a, 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 a beautiful a break, a sitting triangle, and then a wedge, symmetrical wedge break yesterday on gold. I mean, crude about two days ago, which was a huge trade, over a $1,000 trade. So you can really see, if you skinny it down, the price pattern. Rising wedges are bearish, so once it closes below it, take the first retracement up to resistance, it nailed the high, now we're down to LVA, really nice easy trade setup with low risk.
Okay, so rising wedges are two to three higher lows, two to three higher highs. Let it break. Let it retest market profile. <clears throat> now remember, the patterns by themselves fail. So pattern recognition is not conducive to a great trading plan because they fail a lot. So what you do is, is you find the pattern like a rising wedge, falling wedges, which are bullish, rising wedges, which are bearish, bull flag, bear flags, ascending, descending triangles. I teach you those. And then our powerful symmetrical wedge that we had a couple of days ago that had that huge $1,000 uh, potential move. And then what you do is, once that pattern's broken, then we use my powerful market profile that's worked for 32 years, and we use it for entry. So once your pattern's broken, we know it's a bearish pattern. We look for the first retracement into HVA, and then we got a nice little easy trade to the downside. Easy, right? Easy, easy to see, easy to execute, because once it retested high value area, there's a brick wall at the time up here. You go two ticks, we wait for a negative market delta to close red. Now this is negative 862, a huge sell and bounce, 862, huge sell and bounce, big sell and bounce, right? Anything over 200 on crude oil is a big order imbalance. So this is the cool thing about market profiles, market delta. These big red, blue, and green lines are the internals of the market. It's the volume of all these different uh, hedges out there, all the algorithms, all the professional amateur traders, and it's creating natural support and resistance based upon volume, order flow. So then once it retests those levels, we never trade unless we're on market profile, we look for a negative market delta on the retest, which it happened. Here's the big negative, closes red for us, 862, just a huge internal sell imbalance in the market. We're not looking at stochastic, we're not looking at these different lagging indicators, we're looking at the internals of the market. That's a difference between having knowledge in the market and being an amateur trader. We're looking internally at market profile, at market delta, and it tells us internally what's going on. So it had a major sell and bounce of 862. So you open your position up at the close of that red bar. Your stop loss is going to be a natural two ticks above that swing high. On any market you trade, no matter what, you do not want to risk more than two ticks above the swing on market delta after entry. Why? Because if you are going to be a confident trader, if you're going to be a successful trader, you have to contain risk. Futures are very aggressive. Stocks are very aggressive. Forex is very aggressive. Currency is very aggressive. What we have to do, there's a lot of opportunity in those markets, but it will eat you alive and take all your ticks unless you have contained stops. You must contain your stops and minimize risk being two ticks outside of that. Now, we're so accurate with our profile and market delta, we don't need more than two ticks. We don't need 20 tick stops. We don't need 30 tick stops. We need two ticks above that swing high and swing low. And that's how it is on all markets. I don't care if you trade the Aussie. I don't care if you trade currency. I don't care if you trade the Forex. I don't care what you trade. It's always two ticks above and below the swing. Okay, make sure you understand that. And then the first push, you can take it out the first 10 ticks on my symmetry dots. Right here they were on our first push. There's your first push to exit, two ticks above the symmetry dots. Now we're trying to get to the second set of symmetry dots or opposite profile, which it came down to 47.70. So now you're talking about a $250 trade potential that just happened per one contract. So if you're doing multiple contracts, you, you got five, 500, 700, maybe $800 in the books right now just upon multiple contract trades if you wrote it from the HVA down to the LVA. All right, so it's a really good system when you know the rhythm of it. The rhythm of it is, is we, find the, we find the overall direction of the trend. We try to take retracements with that trend, okay? And then the only time we can counter trend trade if we get back inside a high value, which is here, that got back inside. This is back inside a high value or low value. So you knew we're in for a corrective wave. That weakened the market. These two on the white chart weaken or strengthen the market. So when we broke the rising wedge, this told the tail that the market was weakening. Right there. 6.30 this morning, that high, said the market's starting to weaken. Then we got a big swing up again, tested the HVA. That was our entry on the retest of HVA with negative market delta. There you go. So that's a rising wedge, retest, high value area, short with negative market delta. <clears throat> okay, Gerald, go over to gold real quick. 
If I look at gold, <clears throat> if I take a look at gold, switch over to gold, Gerald. Okay, thanks, man. Sorry. Is if I look at gold, I got the similar situation. I've got a huge what I call brick wall. Now check this out. I, I put this rising wedge up. I got three, a couple higher highs, one, two higher highs. I got three higher lows. So we're in a bearish rising wedge on gold also. I said gold right here, I'm gonna tell you right now, and you can see at 12, 20 and a half is major support. Look at my volume profile. Well, I mean my uh, volume profile in low value area. Look at 20 and a half support. That is a brick wall. I've got three profiles stacked on top of each other. Check this out. I've got my volume profile right there, my LVA, my longer term profile at 2060, my volume profile at 2050, my price profile, which are the dots, at 2080. Check out this support. Now the market bounced pretty hard off this, but my play is this. My play is if we get through this level, then we come down and take out the lows down to 1215. You probably got around a 600, five to six hundred dollar trade potential risking 130 bucks. Why? Because this is a rising wedge. Rising wedges are bearish. Now can we short the rising wedge right here at 1220 or 1220? No. You got a shot at like Earl did. Earl shorted this first retracement, which is smart. He shorted this right there at the first retracement back up negative market delta. That brought you lower. So that's a good short. But now you got to wait for the next short. You're going to have to wait until this thing breaks its back. It's got to break 20 and a half. Remember, market profile sets these trades up. So I'm going to break 20 and a half. If I break 20 and a half, I'm going to look for a simple ABC short like we've been doing ever since we opened the room. We're going to let it break. We're going to see if it can rotate back up, retest, get outside of it. That creates an order imbalance in the market because now the market becomes out of balance or we call it imbalanced. We should see this if it breaks. Okay, so you cannot short the market down here until we break through this, retest it. If we do that, we should come down to the lows of 1215. Okay, that's how we do it. If you didn't play yesterday's video, make sure you play yesterday's video on how to trade break. I mean, how to trade. You have three chances at market profile. Play yesterday's video. It's very informative. I'm telling you. You're going to get a lot from it. I got a lot of traders inside and outside this room that took a lot from that new traders. If you're a new trader, the light bulb is going to come on once you see it trading live before it broke out and took off. Okay, so uh, play that video, help you out. Now, if we go, go back to crude real quick, Jerry, I'll shut this off. Back to crude. Now, if we look at crude right here, if we get through this low value area for runner guys, here's our target. Look at this black hole in the market look at that nice and juicy right that's a juicy little stake right there so if we can if we can stay below the control point right here and turn negative market delta again and get through the lva you got 70 all the way down to 11 that means we got a potential trade on our hands of almost 95 all the way down to 11 almost an 800 hundred dollar trade potential risking 130 bucks on our initial uh, initial trade we got to get through that low value area though to get down to 47.11. But that's our overall target on the bearish rising wedge. All the way down to 11. Make sure you're scaled. You guys are scaled from our entry. Retest of HVA, negative market delta. So make sure we're scaled there. Now, so this is what I was talking about, uh, our big, our big uh, symmetrical wedge. This is another big one called a symmetrical wedge you've got to be familiar with. It is comprised of two higher lows and two lower highs. And it broke our, our, our profile and retested right there. And look at that big opportunity there, too. That's 46.40, down almost a $1,000 trade per one contract. This is what I'm talking about, guys. I'm going to teach you pattern recognition with market profile. Because when you get both together, it's pretty powerful. And I only got a couple patterns. I only got a couple patterns to deal with that we look at. And uh, I'll teach you how to do that. Uh, this is one of my most popular symmetrical wedges, two higher lows, two lower highs, or two higher lows, two lower highs. Here's another popular one, rising wedge, which is bearish, that we jumped on this morning. 